I'm not being funny, but anybody that doesn't like that sound has got something pathologically wrong with their brain. Okay, something a bit different today. I don't make very many videos of it, but today I'm going to make a video of the Cobra. Dax AC Cobra kit car, which is owned by my best friend Adam. Who you're going to see in a minute up the garage. He'll give you a rundown of the Cobra, but just to give you a little idea, it's, it's needing brakes being bled for a process towards getting it towards an MOT. So we're going to try and attempt to do that today. We're going to get the clutch bled today. And then after that, the car is in a situation where it needs a few remedial little bits and bobs and then it can go for an MOT and hopefully pass, even though it's bloody loud and a bit uncouth and he can get driving it in the summertime this year. Just a little bit of background I wanted to give you about Adam so he doesn't just appear in the video and magically there he is. Uh, he's one of my best mates, known him for a long time. I accredit Adam with a lot of my knowledge of cars. I loved cars ever since I was a kid, I think it was the first word I ever said. But I always loved the way cars looked and didn't really understand the nitty gritty about how they worked and you know the different engines they had and all the sort of detailed stuff. When I first met Adam, he was the first person in my life that really taught me a little bit about how different engines sounded, um, about what cool cars were, it gave me a taste for the function over the form and started me on, I suppose, this journey that I've been on for the last 15 something years, uh, learning about how they work and how to fix them. He's pretty handy himself and knows a few bits and has had this desire to get this Cobra in his possession and running for a long, long time. I'll let him fill you out with how it came around and where the car comes from, but I'll stop waffling now. We'll get out to the garage, we'll show you what's happening with the car, and hopefully, We'll get some nice solid brake pedal today and we can look forward to getting on the road. Morning, morning, morning. How you doing? One Cobra. Which we're going to make brake today. You've not seen this in a while, YouTube. So there you go. No seats in it at the moment. And one Mr. Adam. Adam's going to be on camera today. Say hello to YouTube, mate. Hello. We'll get started, we'll get a bit of fluid in. I might put the head cam on for that so you can see what's going on. And then yeah, we'll see what we've got. On the reservoirs put in, clutch still in the reservoir is in, clutch sleeve bleed nipple bolt has been loosened up. Uh, Adam's just gone and got the biggest adjustment spanner in the world. <laughs> uh, there's a weird sort of setup in this car where there's one rear line that goes to the uh, the back brakes and then that's separated between the, the calipers. The calipers are inboard calipers, so uh, you may not be able to make this out, but they're actually in here. Um, there's a strange bleed nipple part which comes off to the passenger side of the car because the calipers themselves are incredibly hard to get to when from underneath the car. Bleeding from the actual calipers themselves is a bit of a challenge. So the kit, I believe, I'm not sure if it includes it or not, but it's one of the, the modifications that's been done is to have this sort of external bleed nipple put on so that you can get underneath the car with an 11mm spanner, I think, and get on that bleed nipple. Uh, I'll be going under a bit later on and having a look at that but it's basically underneath the floor pan but straight down from where my hand is here. Once we've got the cylinders in we can get some fluid started into the lines and then we can start bleeding. Right, so we've got master cylinders in. It's time to start pumping pedals and looking for leaks. Jump in and give it a few pounds straight away just to see yeah. if there's anything that comes out of this master cylinder or not. Yeah, we've got some leakage. I can't tell if it's coming from the brass pipe into the master cylinder or from the cable tie, sort of jubilee clip around the rubber pipe. See, you've got some weepage coming up, look. Yeah. And that drip there. I think we might be there. Uh, let's have a little look and try and see. How's the brake pedal feel, mate? It feels solid. Clutch? Clutch is quite light. Still feels quite light? Still feels quite light, yeah. Right, okay. Does it move? Is it any Am I getting any clutch movement? Yes, baby. Clutch is moving, mates. Right, so we've got all our reservoirs plumbed in. We've got, I think, no leaks. 
got brakes, we've got a clutch. still hasn't gone off throw, it's definitely moving. Yeah. Can you put it in gear now? Should be able to do it fine, shouldn't you? It just doesn't, the pedal doesn't feel right. So Does it not? Too it's far too light. Far too light. Won't go in third. Won't go in fourth. But it will with the clutch press then? No. You get a good, like, you get a good inch of travel there, man. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so we're back and it's day two of trying to get the Cobra to have a decent clutch and brakes. Um, we had issues bleeding the clutch slave cylinder. Right, so we've just got the slave cylinder back in and we're going to give it a test. But before we do, we wanted to just get a bit of a proper introduction to the car and Adam and get a bit more of Adam's background. You heard me waffling at the start of the video, but your dad made this car back in the 90s, is that right? Well, I think... Around 88, 89, I remember uh, sort of it being in bits. Um, oh, okay, so it's further than I thought. So, yeah, so it's a it's a Dax Togero AC Cobra replica, and so it's got the Ford small block Windsor. It's only a 302, which is the five litre. It's got big valve heads, albeit cast iron ones. It's got a new water pump and belts and everything that I fitted ages ago. We are a while back now, yeah. um, what's going on about it? The main problem was uh, it used to run on uh, using an E-type uh, braking setup with a uh, remote servo. My dad wanted to swap that to the new setup that Dax uses, which is a, an Escort master cylinder and servo bolted straight to the end of the bulkhead there. The With the old kits, the clutch cylinder is actually mounted next to the master cylinder, so the servo won't fit there. So what my dad did, hoping it would work, was to put the Escort master cylinder with no servo straight onto the end of the bulkhead and as you can imagine there is just nowhere near enough pressure in the system to actually get the brakes working. So I bought myself an updated DAX pedal box which moves the clutch cylinder above the bulkhead which you'll be able to see photos of I'm sure and that allows me to put the servo and the master cylinder from an Escort and plumb everything in as stacks do it now. But with all the lines being dry and all the pedals having to come off and everything, I've had to bleed the whole, everything that's related to clutch and brake, I've had to bleed and try and sort out. And I need to make sure the pedals are aligned properly because the last thing you want is to have to slam on the brake and it be two inches too high and you end up, you know, putting your foot to the floor and nothing happening, so. Long um, story short, it's been a nightmare, hasn't it's it? Been a, it's been, yeah. just to get brakes in the thing. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, springtime is around the corner, although it doesn't feel like it at all. Um, <laughs> so it would be good to at least get it to a point where I can take it to an MOT and hopefully do all those little fixes that you would associate with a normal car. Because, as you can tell, it's a mishmash of bits, um, being a kit. And, you know, there's no manual. Um, and bless my dad, you know, he, he built all this with no internet. Uh, a really crappy manual from Dax and so a lot of it's you know go down the local motor factors pick this bit up add that and so yeah there's a mishmash of a few bits I've put new header tank with an overflow here just to tidy all that up because the original filler was at the top here yeah, which isn't that before, did yeah you? which wasn't really quite high enough in order to get the system fully bled but with this being as high as it can go without the uh, boot being uh, the bonnet being in the way I'm pretty confident this has been warmed up a few times and there aren't any bubbles and this doesn't fill up which is good um, so yeah What's the dream I really want to keep the same block because it's a small block for a, v for a V8 if you look down here you can see how close the exhaust headers are to the uh, the body shell basically 
Um, it did have um, a set of side pipes that my dad made from scratch, but they were far too boomy for motorway driving. So what he did is took some shorty headers and flipped them round so the collector points forward and then took it to an exhaust specialist who then created an exhaust going right to the back. I've since chopped it off underneath and I've tried to retain some sort of side exitness going on and put a couple of elbows at the end of the cherry bombs under there and the, so the pipe sticks straight out the side um, which is kind of like the 289 FIA spec Cobras that they used to do. I'm not particularly confident that it's going to be quite enough to yeah, get through the MOT. Get through the MOT. And yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if there are any particular regulations for decibel limit. Well, a car exhaust <laughs> system is not allowed to be altered or adjusted to be louder than it was originally intended from the factory. Well, this, this was never came out of factory, no. so you could so argue either way with this one. We're kind of hoping um, it goes straight through, aren't we? The good thing is it's a 1971 block, which means that the regulations for emissions for a block of that age is no visible smoke. <laughs> as long as there's no smoke coming out of it, it should pass in terms of emissions. Now, if I was to put a a more modern, you know, small block V8 in here, then I would have to think about getting those emissions down to really restrictive levels in terms of performance now. So that's about it really. But working from the top down, we've got an Edelbrock carb. We've got an Edelbrock Performer 289 intake, <coughs> which are now quite obsolete. And they're actually, the casting's quite old and you can get replacements that are much higher flowing. So that'd be one thing I'd like to change. Cool, right, okay. We've got Windsor Senior big valve heads. So they're a, a 2.02 intake and 1.6 exhaust valve. That's inches, just so everybody That's knows. That's inches, yeah. These are cast iron and one of Part of the dream would be to get some aluminium ones. And working down, it's it's done about 20,000 miles since it was rebuilt, so I think the engine's pretty strong. What about the body? Are you going to change the colour? Well, I'd like to, but I think that can be decided when it's actually on the road and running. It's low down in the list, isn't it? It's pretty low yeah. down on the list. It's a nice colour when it's polished up. Would you ever supercharge it? Oh, well, of course, I'd love to. The problem I have, it, there's no way I'll be able to put a Roots one on, because it'll sit about this high, and I'd have to get a new bonnet. You can get the centrifugal ones which sit and run off the belt down here which might, might just fit but then there's a, a quite a, a big intake tube that needs to go on the top here but it's something that I'd definitely love to do and if it means getting a new bonnet with a larger bulge then <laughs> yeah so what yeah what the other thing in here as well is this roll bar you wanted to do some of this didn't you well the new Dax ones the roll bar the the brace here comes off the middle and goes down through the bodywork to some steel work here. Now there isn't actually any steel work on the chassis on these old ones to enable me to do that so I think I'm going to probably have to keep this as it is but I want some much lower profile seats because I've got quite a long body and I'm quite tall so my shoulder is quite close to here so you know going over bumps I don't really want to be destroying my shoulder on here. funny but anybody that doesn't like that sound has got something pathologically wrong with their brain. Um, us nine year old boys can't get enough of that stuff so yeah as Adam you might or might not have just heard him say he needs air in one of the tyres it's got a slow puncture which needs to be sorted um, there needs to be some interior stuff going back in it and then we'll get it out roll it around and test the brakes out make sure it doesn't want to kill anyone. Happy? Yeah really happy. Yeah. Yeah a bit worried about the brakes but you know well, we'll find out the, the start rolling it. It's set up as per what DAX do now, so I can't see unless there's something wrong with the pistons in the brakes themselves. Should, should be, be fine. fine. 